So, how do we make a boat with a moderately powered small block run almost 100 miles an hour? Well, you can make all the power in the world, but it ain't gonna run if your pump ain't right. It's all in the pump. Well, for starters, let's get a little more power. And that's always a good way. This is a um, power shop plate rated to 125 that I've been spraying 140 but now it's been modified and it should be able to spray close to what a big shot will do big item often not even looked at is your shoe this little guy your shoe he's down there underneath the boat in front of the keel behind the or behind the keel behind the intake uh, just scooping up water as you're scooting across the lake whether it be 60, 100, 125, whatever, shoe is down there picking up water. Now, you get too much shoe, and it's hanging down below the boat, uh, he's giving you brakes, which will give you that braking sensation when you let up on the gas, sometimes. Depending on your speed, it's gonna dictate how much shoe you need. Uh, if you're at top speed and you got water, you could probably take some shoe out. If you start running out of water, then you shim it and put, put the shoe back in, whatever you took out. Because this can be... This one's been taken down 40,000 at a time and have yet to run out of water. Every time we take it out, you pick up a couple miles an hour on the top end. Top end. So, you can take this down 40,000 at a time until you lose loading. Then you got to put that 40,000 back and that's where your shoe needs to be. Of course you can modify your motor and get more speed and then you need to put more shoe back so make it 80 thousandths uh, shim and put it back in but your shoe very adjustable and this does in my opinion this affects top speed and like all these other mods I'm showing you have a professional do it don't do this by yourself get a pump guy have a pump guy do it. a guy who works on pumps have him do this kind of stuff um, I believe all the mods I've done with my boat all right, without changing anything on the motor, we spent all last summer tuning. I do believe that this was most beneficial for uh, speed gains. A lot of these others helped out with acceleration, loading, off the line, the dig. I think top end, here's where your gain's at in the shoe. Get your shoe right amongst all the other things. And then you got your impeller and your inducer combo. First, you got to get water off the line. You got to get water to the impeller, and this is the key right here. If you don't have one of these, the impeller is going to just rip the water in half, uh, cause air and cavitation. This moves your cavitation to the pre impeller and keeps the impeller loaded with water at all times. Once you start forward motion, its job is done. It's just off the line when you hit it out of the hole, it keeps water in your impeller constantly. Then there's a spacer. Then the old impeller. This puppy right here is a stainless. Nice and sharp. Nice and perfect. Radius. Radius everywhere. Perfectly smooth. Uh, it's had material removed, so it's slightly cupped. Uh, this baby is a work of art right here. Uh, and it ain't cheap to get something like this done, but like I said, if you can't get your power to the water, your boat ain't gonna go nowhere. And then your cut. Get your cut on your impeller to match your cam. Wherever your cam makes peak horsepower, cut the impeller so it turns at that RPM. And then you get all your power down. That's real simple right there. Also very, very important on your impeller is balance. You can see little work here, little work here, a uh, little off right here. You wanna make sure this thing is balanced. It's 600 or 6,000, 7,000, whatever RPM. You don't need this thing out of balance, taking your pump shaft and having it wobble up and down like this because this sucker is off even a gram uh, same thing with this to your inducer it's on the shaft so it needs to be balanced also 
Uh, there's another good look at that though. Man, the suckers, these are nice. Real sharp too. But yeah, balance. These things should be balanced. Um, so it's so it's all perfectly weighted and uh, doesn't cause no wobble in your pump shaft. So you got your impeller. Water leaves the impeller. Next thing it's going to enter is the bowl. So we come to the bowl. You're going to hit your bowl, and I tell you right now, some people believe they work, some people they don't. But if you have a Berkeley bowl, it don't apply to Dominator. Dominator will have a ridge, and the back of your impeller slides in it. Berkeley bowls don't have that. And what you have in a Berkeley bowl is this huge hole behind your impeller. This is a stuffer plate. It eliminates that hole so water is not back here just sloshing around. They say they're especially beneficial on hole shot. I don't know. Never mind run without it. It came with it. And all I've done was put the correct bolts in it. And I know my hole shot's pretty good with a Berkeley bowl. So that's your stuffer plate. And then your bowl work. All detailed maybe use a little more work along here but they're not too bad I mean it looks worse than it is I think it's just old powder coat or something that's from when it was previously powder coated it's it really is nice and smooth through here um, and then your outlet transition I'm doing this one-handed here your outlet blades just like airplane wing as the water comes in then blades have to cut it in half. When the water comes out, the water it needs to be put back together to re eliminate the turbulence. Um, and that's the same thing with your blades on your impeller and the inducer. We'll get a good look at this. These usually come, you know, manufactured. Uh, they're CNC billet machine, but these are all, these blades are all squared up. This thing is, has a, a hard edge on. There's a hard edge here, hard edge here. And on the bottom of the back side, there's a hard edge. Um, they also you generally come shrouded, and you have to unshroud that. Um, that'll hurt your top end if they stay shrouded. So round all that, and same thing with these. Round all these. So as the blade cuts the water, the front, well, for this one, the front cuts the water. Uh, the water travels across and gets pushed forward, but at the end of it, the water comes back together smoothly, and its position it was here it gets put back into position. Same thing here water flows back into position very smoothly also something on your bowl there's a transition right here there we go you can see where it's been worked you get that rounded so you get a nice smooth flow coming off of here uh, again if there's a hard corner as cast um, the back side of this corner there'll be some turbulence right here we want to get that gone we don't want no turbulence at all so we get rid of that stuff for plate bowl. Um, okay, I went ahead and grabbed the droop snoot. Um, next piece coming out of the bowl is your droop snoot. And again, it's all about water flow. These things will come with a big splitter in the middle. And there will be a hump right through this area. And the idea is, uh, you know, my opinion and opinions of others, anything in the flow of water is doing nothing but hampering the flow of water so the whole idea on this we get that splitter out and try to get this straight and these straight so all your things are a straight line basically we just took you know cut it out ground it smooth cylinder honed it and got this all as much of a straight line as it can be so the water does not have to deflect coming through the droop snoot at all and then tailing the droop snoot the steering uh, nozzle hooks onto here and um, there's a radius in the steering nozzle that's been taken down so it matches uh, this right here on the steering nozzle and then it leads to your nozzle and then going back to the nozzle we've already talked about it you know again straight line flow through the t you know top bottom and all sides as long as possible with the smallest point being the very end of your nozzle insert if you don't have a nozzle insert not all that you can do. You want to haul butt? Recommended uh, install, nozzle insert. Um, now, the ones from CP Performance, Berkeley Jet Drive, uh, Hard Marine, all the same company, they come color coded. 
purple is as small as they get. That's a three inch. And then you got uh, all red and, and gold and all the different colors. Um, and get with your friends. Guys have different colors. You can pop them in and try them out. All it holds it in is a is an Allen set screw right here. It's the only thing that holds these things in. They're real easy to swap out with nothing but an Allen wrench. So you can go out to the lake on one afternoon with your buddies and, and try different size nozzles and see what happens. Um, get the right nozzle for your setup. Um, and then, of course, it goes without saying, before any of this gets there, you got to have a correct keel, a uh, correct loader to keep the pump fed at all times, at all speeds, whatever your boat's going. And if you're running 110, you got to keep water in at 110. If you're only running 70, you got to keep water in at 70. But uh, bottom bottom of the boat and your loader needs to be done. To keep the pump fed, but that's the key. Pump a good pump. It's worth 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 its weight in gold. That's basically it. That's how you make a moderately powered boat run almost 100 miles an hour. Get your pump right. Um, and I would not suggest doing any of this on your own. I'm by no means a pump expert. I take it to a guy who does nothing but pumps. That's what he does, and he does it well. So, that's my take on it. Good luck, and we'll see you on the water this summer.